Thank you, Madam Chair. Thanks for providing us the opportunity to have uh, oversight over the bank regulatory system. I want to thank uh, each of you for appearing today. Thanks for spending time uh, with us. And congratulations for the hard work over the last few months to implement S2155 across the agencies. Uh, you met together, you had your checklist, you uh, got that work done and reported that to Congress in a timely way. And all of us and our constituents, thank you for that attention. Um, Mr. Quarles, I wanted to follow up a discussion that we've had on and off over the last few weeks and talk briefly about uh, bank supervision by the Federal Reserve as it relates to the September 16th, September 17th uh, disruption in the repurchase market. Um, I know that's being studied by the Fed uh, in earnest, uh, led by the New York Bank, and I appreciated that. But when you see the amount of reserves held by the banks, uh, they're extensive. I mean, they're far above any requirement by the Dodd-Frank rules. Uh, there is uh, very little chance of a foot fault uh, in those reserves that I think particularly the big banks hold. In fact, looking at the numbers, the four largest banks collectively have more cash at the Fed than the next 24 combined. So there seems to be a lot of cash uh, held at the Fed. How does the Fed make clear to banks that interday lending uh, is a good thing? In other words, that banks have access to those uh, cash amounts that are far in excess of what they need regulatorily. Uh, so uh, I, I think there are a variety of measures that we can take. We are actively looking at what will be uh, effective. We do want to ensure that our, uh, you know, our supervisory, uh, both the regulatory system and our supervisory practices are not creating undue incentives for the hoarding of central bank reserves uh, by some institutions. Uh, part of that is simply communication, ensuring that our supervisors are communicating clearly about what Fed expectations are. Uh, some of it can be, uh, you know, taking measures uh, to ensure that banks are comfortable, that they will have access to immediate liquidity from other forms of, uh, if they're holding other forms of liquid assets other than central bank reserves, and all of that's under active consideration. Well, would you, I mean, certainly before the financial crisis, uh, having a daylight overdraft at the Fed was considered a, a routine business activity. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. Had there been uh, much to speak of in the ways of daylight overdrafts by the banking industry since the crisis? Very little. Would you say there's a, a stigma has been uh, attached to having a daylight overdraft during the, an interday process? I think that's uh, inarguable. We hear that from the industry. So that issue uh, uh, is curious to me when just, I think, uh, Mr. Diamond at J.P. Morgan Chase reported something like $60 billion in cash was required uh, that he keep that at the Fed, but his cash balance was like $120 billion, for example, on a daily basis. That seems like a lot of room to participate in that market if it was economically, if there was an economic incentive to do so. So assuming there's an economic incentive to have a rising repo rate, I'm just curious why that stigma is so pronounced. Uh, well, among the, you know, uh, uh, among the consequences of the increased transparency uh, after Dodd-Frank uh, is, you know, has been, uh, you know, a decreasing willingness of institutions to take advantage of, uh, uh, you know, of some of the credit provision from the Federal Reserve. Right. Uh, and that, you know, and, and that has contributed, although I, I do want to emphasize that we don't think that it is the driving factor, but that has contributed yeah. to some of the... Well, I've heard GSIB surcharges might contribute to it and others, but do you think Section 1103 of Dodd-Frank that requires the Fed to publicly disclose that banks borrowed at the discount window, that that should be reconsidered? I wouldn't go so far. I, I, I haven't concluded that it should be... Uh, well, it depends on the definition of reconsidered. Uh, I do think we, we have to think it? about what the implications of it are. I certainly haven't concluded that it should be repealed, but we should be aware of, of the full range of its consequences. Thank you. Well, I want to touch on a couple of other things. Uh, Chairman Luke DeMeyer talked about uh, screen scraping. I'd like each of you to answer this question. Do you support the use of APIs by financial institutions that you regulate exclusively for access to consumer data by you know, data aggregators that aren't part of the bank. Mr. Quarles? Uh, we do support the, the increased use of APIs as a more secure way of dealing with uh, would you data. Would you require it, do you think, in, in the future, subject to a rulemaking and a process and all that? Uh, I, I, we should give consideration to that. We haven't concluded we should require it. Uh, Director McWilliams? Uh, a general lien agreement, yes. Mr. Hood? 
general agreement, but I'd have to study it for its impact on our smaller Thank institutions. Thank you, Madam Chair. I yield back.